Otto Julius Bierbaum was a German writer, journalist, and libretto writer. Born in 1865 in Greenberg, son of restaurateur Otto Bierbaum and Henrietta Siegert, he studied at the Thomas Schule zu Leipzig, the Zurich University, the Ludwig Maximilian University in Munch, the Friedrich Wilhelm University zu Berlin, and the Leipzig University. He became editor of the Freie Bühne, Pan, and the Insel magazines, publishing a variety of prose, poetry, reviews, and librettos including a novelization of Collodi's Pinocchio, his literary friends including Detlef von Lidienkron, Oskar Panitzer, and Hans von Gumpenberg. In 1892, he married teacher Augusta Rathgeber, the two divorcing in 1899. In 1901, he married 18-year-old Italian Gemma Prunetti Lotti. They lived separately, as Bierbaum was not very social, working at night and sleeping during the day. He died in 1910 at Kutchenbroda, in 1908, he published three volumes of Strange Tales, or Sonderbare Geschichten. We shall be covering the first volume. The first of the two stories, more of a novella, is Schmulius Caesar or the Marzauna Art Era. Conte Francesco de Navagero, painter, architect, etcher, and woodcutter, is standing on the roof of his castle, spying on the valley through his looking glass, along with his wife Olympia, a woman who doesn't understand musical notation but composes entire operas, dressed in what is really a potato sack decorated like wallpaper. The Conte goes on about how he despises nature, and thinks himself far superior and much more clever, and the only thing he despises more than nature are people from Pomerania, which includes his wife's own family. Actually, he's not even standing on his roof, but what was left when the upper floors of his castle fell apart, leaving behind a platform whose life-threatening ruinousness the Conte delights in, along with the medieval toilet where the devil was said to have strangled an old cook, who still haunts the premises occasionally, with her head twisted all the way round. When he stops scanning the countryside, the Conte gets into an argument with his brother Joseph Peppino, who, despite being the elder brother, is business manager to the Conte, and argues with the Conte over the massive expenses of his various Get Famous Quick schemes, which cost millions and bring in a few bits at most, the Conte acting as a literal king and demanding to be treated as such. Later, a Tirolis husband and wife are entertained at the Navagero ruins, where the Conte shows them all the bizarre and cheeky furniture and other various accoutrements he had made. To give an example of his taste and the general ethos of the establishment, he had a large scene from Greek myth, engraved into the front of a closet, where the keyhole is placed between Venus's legs. However, there is a sudden change of atmosphere, as all the clocks start going insane and their hands fly off, embedding themselves into pages of books as if to convey a specific message, before the Conte's parrot starts screaming and eventually gets claimed by the sudden arrival of the Eternal Jew. Samalio Pardulus is the story of a demonic deformed artist and son of a powerful Roman noble who lives alone in the forest hated by everyone because he looks like his father mated with a horse. He is warned to spend his time painting horrid blasphemous paintings so he can have them for company instead of other people and using his evil demonic magic to try and seduce his own sister. It is a dark story without the mischievous wit of the first one, but has its own proper darkness to alleviate this. Samalio himself is somewhat of a tragic figure, though still very much evil and corrupted. As he says, if he could not paint, he would find the worst and most horrid prostitutes to have children with, purely to have a different humanity around him than the one he has to deal with. Neither story is pure satire, though the Conte's eccentricities might appear as such. I am happy that Samalio was published by Wakefield Press in English for the first time, but I am a little sad the first story is yet to be translated at all. It is worth a read purely for how bizarre and inexplicable everything gets.